Whatever rots your socks, whatever spins your top Whatever winds your watch, whatever flips your flop Whatever turns you on, whatever flies your flag Whatever bangs your gong or whatever swings your bag Do it after but do it well Cause nobody knows and there's no way to tell When the ride ends Boy Meets Girl by Stephen W. Palmer Makara was sitting at the bar, bored and listless, talking to Saray the cashier about nothing in particular. The bar had seen fewer than 10 customers all night, and it didn't look as if that was going to change. Nights like this had been too common recently, and the girls all hoped that January would see a big increase in custom. If it didn't, then a few girls would likely have to be let go, returning to their villages or working in one of the sweatshops that surrounded Phnom Penh like a Berlin Wall of exploitation. The door swung open, and there was a deafening chorus of hello from all the girls as they flocked around the newcomers in the hope of being chosen. With the month so quiet, the two men entering were deluged with girls eager to earn some dollars. Makara didn't like being in front, so always lost out to that initial rush. Neither of the men looked to be her type anyway. She picked up her phone choosing to play on Facebook for a time while Saray sorted drinks for the customers. As usual, there were multiple friend requests from men she didn't know, and as usual, she deleted all of them. Some of the other girls accepted all these requests in the hope that one of them would be the man of their dreams, but the reality was usually just sleaze and dick pics. Another man came in. When a single man came into a bar, it was pretty much a certainty that he was looking to take a girl home or back to his hotel. Some of the girls went to greet the new customer. Like limpets, they clung to him and steered him to an empty booth near the pool table, hoping at the very least he would buy drinks and that at the very best he would choose to bar find one of them or even two of them. He was actually more her type than she had seen for a couple of weeks. Aged about 35, he wasn't handsome, but he wasn't ugly. He had kind eyes and was well-groomed and seemed a little shy at the attention he was getting. Makara returned her attention to her phone, occasionally glancing over to observe the flirtatious machinations of her workmates. On her third glance, she noticed he was staring intently at her. She blushed, a natural reaction she often had that only added to the innocent charm that so many men liked. She tried to keep her attention on the phone, but found her eyes drawn back to the man in the booth time and time again, and every time she looked, the man was still staring at her. Should she go over? No, let him ask to speak to her. A certain degree of aloofness was another trait that had served her well over this last year. Forcing herself to stare at the phone, she resisted every urge to look again. After about 10 minutes, one of the girls who'd been sitting with him came over and sat beside Makara at the bar. The parang doesn't like us she said quietly in Khmer. He wants you to go and sit with him. The man was still staring straight at her, and when she looked, he smiled. She made her way over to him, and he indicated she should sit beside him. The other two girls giggled, but Makara could see the annoyed look in their eyes. Sour's day, he said in clumsy Khmer. Soak sabai? She smiled. It's okay, Bong. I speak English. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, too, he answered hesitantly, 
Sorry, my Khmer is not very good. At least you try, she said. They chatted easily. His name was Ryan. He was 32 and from Nottingham. He told her he was a freelance web designer and was considering relocating to Phnom Penh. Makara nodded and smiled at all the right times. He asked about where she was from and her family back home, and he seemed genuinely interested. When she told him about working with the tours to see the Irrawaddy dolphins, he asked if she would take him to see them. She looked at him sadly and said that she couldn't, as it was her hometown, and too many people would talk if she was traveling with a barang. You're a very special girl, he said. Makara knew he wasn't drunk yet. She had become very experienced at judging how drunk a barang was. Was this just more sweet mouth lies? He hadn't tried to be sleazy, as many of the customers did. In fact, the only physical contact had been when he took her hand before telling her she was beautiful. You probably think I'm just saying nice things, but there really is something special about you, he said. She liked the words. She didn't know if she believed them. Ryan didn't seem to have that desperate aura that so many visitors to the bar had, but she had traveled this road before. He ordered more drinks. Once the drinks arrived, he held her hand under the table, and she let him, still wondering if the hand would travel elsewhere while out of sight. But it remained a tender gesture that let her stay on the road a while longer, she had expected any new direction in conversation to involve a query around bar finds and availability, but instead he surprised her again. Bopa, I do mean it when I say you're special. I know it sounds stupid, but I've never been in one of these bars before, and I have no idea why I came in this one tonight. But when I saw you, I realized that something had made me come in. Sweet mouth. I want to ask you something. Is there any way we could meet for dinner tomorrow night and, and talk more? I'm happy to pay the bar so you can have the night off. And I mean only dinner and drinks. I'm not asking you to come back to my place. You really are too special to rush things. Sweet mouth. But sweet, too. I don't know, she said. I'll have to go and ask my boss. Leaving him alone, she made her way to the small office where the mamasan held court. Do you like this boy? She asked. Yes, Makara said. He seems honest. Okay, said the mamasan. Let me come talk to him. They came and sat on either side of Ryan. Quite a handsome boy said the mamasan in Khmer. Then she grilled the poor Englishman, asking what his plans were for the following night, where he would take Makara, and how much he was willing to pay. Finally, they agreed on a price of $40 for Makara to have the next night off, little more than the average cost of a good dinner in the West. With the money in her hand, the mamasan retreated and left them alone again. Where will I meet you? he asked. Easiest just to meet here. It's close to everything. Is six o'clock okay? Sounds good to me. I am really sorry, but, but I have to go. Makara called for his kit loy, and he paid it, leaving a dollar tip for the cashier and handing two dollars as a tip to Makara. I guess I'll see you tomorrow then, he said. I'm looking forward to it. See you at six o'clock. Ryan leaned forward and kissed her on the cheek. You're very special, he said. Sweet mouth. So are you, she said, and she meant it. Once he had gone, the gossip started, the girls giggling and asking her lots of questions. She fobbed them off with a few details until they grew bored and drifted back to their phones counting the minutes until another quiet night was over.